Radhakrishna sir and other members of uh, ACFE. Thank you very much for uh, this privilege. The number of members attending is not an issue at all. Lesser the oh, members, lesser the members, more the interaction, more the quality interaction. Uh, if more the members, we can't even ask questions. We'll be thinking that I'm wasting many of the members' time. But here, we can have a more informal uh, discussion because the group size is less. So let's take that advantage of uh, interaction. So today's uh, session, though it is called as uh, analytics, I'll be I'll not be taking uh, deeper analytics. I'll only be talking about five things in Excel. Only five things in Excel. Number one is I keep saying this in any forum. Uh, first thing is sort. Next filter. Sort one, two filter, three if conditions. Maybe some if or count if. Three. Four, we look up. Five, pivot table. So why sort is to find ascending or descending order or most similar things is for sort. Because in any fraud analytics, you need to look at the similar, most similar and not similar, highest, lowest, nearby. So that's where we use this uh, similar uh, sort. Filter is to select a particular criteria, we use filter. Three, if conditions. There are so many conditions. If that condition is violated, if that condition is followed, if the address is so and so greater than, if the address is nearby, some total of all that uh, particular criteria. So we use that sum if or whatever sum ifs. Then we look up. We look up is a bridge. Why we look up is we don't have an integrated data. Like I have some certain data in customs files. I have certain files in GST. I have certain files in income tax. I have certain files in uh, municipal tax records. I have certain records in land records. And I have certain records in uh, bank statements. Probably if I want to link all this pulling into one place, then VLOOKUP plays a major role. Meaning, because they are not integrated today, it's been exploited. So if the system is not integrating, we have to integrate. Meaning, I am an unintegrated data. I am using VLOOKUP to pull all that into one place. Once I pull all that into one place, then I'll start using my own MIS reports. Because I have built my own database now with, with the data which is lying in multiple places has been brought into one place. So once I have brought all those things into one place, now I have to use a report. I have to generate a report. What report I have to generate? MIS report. MIS report generally customer wise or aging wise, relation wise, shareholder wise, director wise, email wise. So those things we can very well construct and do it with PIO table. So I said five major important things. If anyone knows, then I am damn sure that 99% of the forensic audits will be finished in no time. So I keep repeating again. One is sort, filter, if condition, we look up and PIO table. Nothing else we will be talking about today. Number one. That is one issue. Number two, control weaknesses is a major issue which gives us a scope to find out where the control weakness is. If this is an area where it is control weakness, then that will definitely be exploited by. It's not I am saying this. You can seeing is believing. Let me take you to that uh, document which says which a prominent bank says that we are weak and we are exploited. I think you can read this. 
It says here. It's going to be shared, sir. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. So I am sharing uh, a CBI uh, FIR filed by Indian Overseas Bank. Uh, this is the language the Indian Overseas Bank is using. The management of the borrower entity took advantage of the fact that maker and checker concept was not in place and there was some negligence on the part of the branch officials. Meaning, what I am trying to say here is, the loopholes will definitely be exploited by a businessman. Business, as you all know, it is stated, Vyaparam Droha Chintanam. Vyaparam Droha Chintanam, meaning any business is only to exploit the other weaknesses, general sense, because it's not an ethical, ethical businesses gone over the days. So hence you find that wherever there is a weakness, they'll try to exploit it. Unless and otherwise, the businesses are, are run by a moral people. So the management here, the bank itself is saying the management of the borrower entity took advantage of the fact that the maker and checker concept was not in place. And there was some negligence on the part of the uh, branch officials. Okay. Having said this, let us look into how many places you have maker and checker in the bank internal controls. I'll just take you to that place now. Wherein internal financial controls, which is shared by the bank and wherein the chartered accountants are supposed to sign that document this year and Last year and this year, bankers are supposed to sign, uh, sorry, the uh, chartered accountants are supposed to sign this maker, uh, sign this internal financial controls. Let us see how, how much banker is saying it is maker and checker. So I'm just trying to find here. So I've selected some things here. Let us see how many are it. <coughs> out of 73 controls, what you see on the left hand side, out of 73 controls, what you see here, the total number of controls in the branch, 38 count here the below 38 count or maker and checker kind of a thing. And I'm talking about one bank called Bank of Baroda. And this is Bank of Baroda. Uh, let me take you to the maker and checker on the risk control matrix for SBI gold loans alone. I'm just talking about only one gold loan, only gold loan process wherein you have 15 processes, 15 processes of gold loan. You can see here, all these processes starting from accepting is manual. How I'm saying this is the legend or this diagram or this Dabba shape indicates this process of pre-scrutiny is a manual process. This is manual, this is manual. And you have 15 such processes as manual, wherein when you and I enter into the bank, uh, bank premises, bank manager says, sir, ours is a total computerized branches, bank, not branches, bank, not one bank. Today, all banks say in one language, one word, that it is total computerized bank and you find you find except one, all these processes are manual processes. Meaning, why I'm, why I'm stressing too much on this is, fraudsters do exploit the weaknesses. The weakness is internal controls. I'm not saying this. You can see again, bank has put it in a highlighted, bold, underlined, 
internal control weakness that allowed misappropriation meaning and it goes on writing these things risk factors arising out of new ventures this account was already classified okay now the most most dangerous issue here is acceptance of agriculture land as a security without considering the provisions of sarpasi wherein bank it allows banks to auction only residential and commercial properties and not the agriculture land and you can understand the internal control weaknesses neither the system has prevented an agriculture land being taken as a security nor the maker and checker has allowed it okay how do i use data how do i use data to find out this simple when you take the uh, loan master file let me just try out yes so if this is a uh, a file which contains 32 columns which has certain data on which has certain data on security type so if you can filter on this i that's what i am saying sort filter and those on etc etc now you can see here it doesn't talk about whether an agriculture land is taken as a if the agriculture land is taken as a security it doesn't mention anything here and this is 1500 lines you find here and nowhere it finds land and building land and building land etc only land it doesn't have and others you have it so what i'm saying is if you are able to get a file of like this then you can able to find out if at all they enter that this is an agriculture land when sarfasi clearly says that you cannot accept this as an agriculture you cannot accept this as a security and system is not preventing now how system is not preventing if you go into the data entry screens if this is a data entry screen if this is a data entry screen then it should have a, it should have a facility to enter it should have a facility to enter the security details like whether it's an agriculture land why agriculture land agriculture land is a serious issue so it should have a facility to describe the nature of security that has been taken now if nature of security is properly taken into then why this report says lnb pndm it should have given it should have given a detailed this if not a detailed description at least some description some valid description where a reader can understand first of all why this report is generated for decision making for whose decision making is it for the auditor's decision making if it is for the auditor's decision making they don't want to give full information if it is management decision making they give much of the information that's where we look up will work if if the same information is generated in any other report where management wants to look into then by using the account code here and the account code that is mentioned in any other securities register then you can pull that wheel through we look up you can pull it and then put it in one of these uh, one of these places so that you can read it in one shot so that is how we look up will work now we are we are trying to understand on the sort and filter as we are trying to understand we are also trying to understand the control weaknesses in data gathering now when you say total computerization of a bank what do you mean by total computerization of a bank 
like i don't know many of the members could be uh chartered accountants if chartered accountant they understand the, the ssp portal of icai or the students portal of icai today is well integrated integrated with the examination department and other departments board of studies department students section is well integrated in the icai with that all the departments are integrated and the student or a member need not run here and there it is an integrated one now in that way the banks have not done their work in an integrated where today the uh, many certificate course uh, of icai members can enroll through the ssp portal attend the classes on ssp portal write exam on the ssp portal results are declared and certificate is issued on the ssp portal itself now to that extent the facilities are available now what about the cbs cbs is only a data entry model wherein transactions are already taken place somewhere else and once the transaction is taken place then that data is fed into the system like you know the uh, sanction ticket the sanction letter of kotak bank or karnataka bank or icici bank or hdfc some of these banks the sanction ticket is generated by the cbs but psu banks the sanction ticket is not generated by the cbs but it is generated in a word document and later on the same data is entered into the system meaning whatever control weaknesses has to happen has already happened in the uh, is already happened in the word document and maker checker has failed there and now you bring those documents and feed the data into and uh, feed the data into a cbs it is more or less like a tally it is more or less like an excel document where you only enter data except for the cash disbursement and checks received and issued except for those facilities other things the system is only a data entry model now why i am so much on to the uh, controls why i am so much on these fields and controls is this has been very well exploited by the businessman so what so what is such reports we need to take out such reports and start making analysis and from that probably we may have to find out <clears throat> is there a fraud or error so for that reason i am just trying to start with uh, i am trying to start with the uh, cbi report where frauds have happened and from there we are trying to understand and go back where it went wrong and what what made what made this error to happen in the system we have understood that and if this if this is a system if this is a system error and there's bound to be wherever there are system error, errors it's bound to be in all those cases errors or fraud will must and should will happen must may may might have happened it and to what extent to what extent is <clears throat> this is the business uh, banking industry in indian economy the gdp is 233 lakh crores the purpose of talking about the purpose of stating the statistics is to understand the magnitude of bank holding the public money and on that public money the kind of control weaknesses to understand that i am just sharing this uh, statistics out of this 233 lakh crores money supply is 200 lakh crores around in the banks as deposits and from that bank credit is 182 lakh crores <coughs> out of this 182 lakh crores npas are 13 lakh crores which are declared undeclared is again huge 
and this npas are also undeclared i am saying because of again data capturing issues and all and some of the members are aware that from july 1st onwards daily marking of npas have been mandated by the rbi but we'll discuss some areas where npas cannot be system driven in certain cases i'll come back to that uh, that's that's of more uh, relevant for the bank auditors for certifying the npas it may not be that much for the uh, analytics and uh, cfe course but okay the subject matter for us today is banking frauds or 3 lakh crores which are 3 lakh crores is which is declared 3 lakh crores is which is declared and undeclared still in the process you know very well wherever 50 crores and above or the bank feels that it has become an npa if the bank feels that there are certain irregularities they can refer that case to the uh, forensic and in such there are thousands of cases are still pending in investigation level i think those who are handling forensic cases as a part of nclt ibc or even otherwise even otherwise as uh, the um, uh, reschedulement as a part of reschedulement process or whatever it is those who are already working on the banking frauds they agree with me their reports are yet to reach the bank and the size of those are much more so hence what i am trying to say here is that is a potential and this 3 lakh crores is only due to the fact that the internal controls are weak i just talked about only one bank we will just look into one more bank and then we'll go into the uh, our subject discussion yeah this is what sbi has stated for a hyderabad based company for a hyderabad based firm of 2018 you can see here the fraud penetrated by the accused person came to light when so and so wherein the godown office come godown was closed borrower's residence not available collateral security was weak and these were all non existent physical stock was no more on the record and these are the issues deficiency in partnership deed audited and provisional balance sheet submitted to the bank for availing uh, the limits for all bogus submission of fake and forged ca certificates closure of units with, within 6 months all purchase invoices submitted by the borrower did not have or contain these numbers unit gst were not filled in or stock statements and ca certificates not received all this then deficiency in kyc deficiency in obtaining verification documents regarding regarding credential financial standing pre sanction deficiency in sanction procedure noting of charge with sro no evidence of having complied with terms no unit inspection and so on and so on what i am saying here is these are all and as there were no stock dp has been zeroized in cbs and accounts have been made npa manually this is what i am saying still then due to non availability of drawing power account slipped into npa and account and then they have declared it as a fraud okay again i am saying let's go back to the internal control why this is happening is internal control weakness as i said having said that you can see here i just uh, internal control weaknesses i'll just with this i'll stop and then we'll go into the other issues because i have i understand that uh, at least few of the members who are attending are bank uh, members or bank auditors so maybe this discussion may be of some use to them and even otherwise the control weaknesses are are the only things that are been exploited even otherwise also even otherwise also as a part of bank audit as a part of any audit why bank audit as a part of any audit 
why we should study internal controls is i am just taking out sa 700 for bank audit report of 2021 i am just reading the content of it with respect to the controls what is our role as a content as a as a chartered accountant now as a as a professional involved in uh, as a professional involved in the forensics or in the audit because there is a very thin line we need to have professional skepticism throughout the audit with clubbed with the professional judgment okay the professional skepticism professional skepticism meaning ability to find out the deviations ability to find out the deviations is an attitude of professional skepticism the moment a big uh, a database or a report is made available to us like this the moment a report is made available to us then we need to we can able to at every line at every row and every column we need to have this professional skepticism what is abnormal what is abnormal what is abnormal what is abnormal is you can see here there are certain gaps where the security is not filled in does this mean these are all unsecured loans or the system has not captured does it mean that these are all abnormal or system has not captured if system is not capturing is it the fault of data entry controls is it the fault of data entry controls where they are not made as mandatory what is mandatory i am just taking you to the is audit experience wherein it says mandatory fields are not adequately defined number one configuration controls are not in place properly these are all the experiences of bank is audit now this bank is audit reading is giving us an understanding through this report reading with through this report reading through this report reading through this report reading that this is abnormal why only for certain columns there is a content and why for the other things there is no content now this kind of this kind of questioning is something called as something called as professional skepticism okay be that as it is coming again here as a part of any audit report as a chartered accountant i am making I am saying here, identify and assess the risk of material misstatement due to fraud or error. Fraud is SA 240. Error, again, it can be anything. SA 240, SA 240, if you look, and, look into, it has given four or five pages of instances how you can smell a fraud or red flags like i rbi has come out with 45 early warning signals which i'll touch upon so the point what i'm saying is as a statutory auditor we need to have professionalism be that as it is and still as a part of audit i am saying here consciously i am saying here i have i have carried out and assessed the risk of fraud or error and i'm saying i have performed i have designed and performed the audit procedures those related to risk and i'm saying i have obtained audit evidence for my opinion and this evidence is sufficient and appropriate sir so today regulators are pulling the auditors only based on this only based on this conscious statement made by the chartered accountant the chartered accountants are pulled and they are asking asking the audit in wherever fraud has occurred they are asking 
show me your working papers for the statement how did you identify and assess the risk of material misstatement show me the working papers especially for the fraud now this fraud has happened what fraud has happened so let me take you to this place here the fraud happened here is that unit is closed stock statements were not there moreover let me just take you to the other uh, yeah okay now when yeah yes so when amounts were when the end use of funds were not adhered to by the management and there are many uh, red flags in the account where the amounts were diverted if not in this you will find in any account like this is one punjab national bank uh, fraud case where where you will find amounts were diverted here you can see here term loan of 191.5 uh, crores were diverted to amar jyoti wherein the promoter is a director the 99% of the stake belongs to this gentleman now this is where the regulators are asking what it, it's a fraud has happened and this can happen and when the amounts were diverted in this particular case now what evidence what procedures did you perform that this is not a fraud or error and what evidence did you obtain that this is not a fraud or error fraud or error will hit your opinion the opinion of the opinion of true and fair will be hit if there is a fraud or error fraud or error has an impact on material misstatement material misstatement is overstatement or understatement so with this statement also i am saying a chartered accountant needs to have a skill of if not bled on if not bled on but the moment you smell something wrong with this professional skepticism wherein something wrong we have just not, some just now we have seen in this we have seen in this there are so many blanks appearing here wherein there is no reason why it should be blank is one thing and moreover moreover when the credit summations in the account the credit summations in the account is zero the account is not having any collections in the account when the account is not having any anything in the credit summation then this account should have become bad wherein this account is not made as an npa now this is a professional skepticism because when there is no collection in the account credit summation when there is no collection in the account credit summation is not there then the account should have been unless and otherwise it is an year end disbursement last day disbursement the collection is not there then the account should have been npa meaning this this issue should have been raised through the professional skepticism now this is what the regulators have started asking mm -hmm. yes we do understand that you are not a bled on auditor watchdog but at the same time the sa 240 which you stay which you state that you have already complied with you have stated that sa 315 is complied with and you are stating here understanding the internal controls relevant to and designed audit procedures to appropriate circumstances when you made all these things then what made you not to find out when frauds are happening in all these cases i have just taken up few of the uh, cases that are available few of the cases that are available in uh, in the cbi state okay so um, i'll just show you where you can also source all these 
the CBI cases for calendar year 2021. For calendar year 2021, on the CBI FIR, you find around 3,636 cases CBI has filed. I don't say all these cases are related to the bank audit, but I am damn sure in this more than 1,500 cases are related to the bank audit filed in 2021 alone. Then there are so many cases in 20 and 19 and 18 and so on and so on. So in what way this is important for us? In what way this content is important to us is to understand the way in which the borrowers have cheated the bank. And by understanding that, we can develop our own analytical procedure, number one, for forensic, for forensic audit purpose. If you read at least, if not 1,500, if you can, uh, uh, if you can read, if you can read at least 100 cases, then you will be able to understand certain methodologies they have adopted to cheat the bank. Now, those methodologies, you can convert that into a search process using data analytics. For that, this will be useful, number one. Number two, so I am not a forensic auditor, but how will this data be useful to me? How this data will be useful to you if you are not a forensic auditor is, this data will be useful for you to write about internal control, internal financial controls reporting that we have to do it mandatory since last year. These stories will be useful for us to fill the IFC content. So we can't just write yes, no, not applicable either in LFR or in internal financial controls. So for that purpose, at least this will be useful. And moreover, if I am into an SBI audit, or if I am into Kendra Bank, or if I am into Punjab National Bank, if I can take all the out of the 1,500 or 2,000 cases of CBI, if I can take at least 50 PNB cases and read those and write down one database as to where the controls are weak, it will be very easy for me to fill, it will be very easy for me to fill this internal financial control reporting, I can fill this processes here. You can see here, the bank is saying, bank is asking the auditor to just mention yes, no, not applicable in this column. Uh, how can you just say yes, no, not applicable? And this is what bank is expecting. This is what one bank is expecting. Look at another bank in the internal financial controls. Since control weaknesses is a major uh, area in the process of investigating the frauds, I am just trying to spend time here. So otherwise, you can see how Bank of Baroda has designed this risk control matrix. Now here they say, Yes, no, not applicable. SBA is bank auditor's response. And branch head also will talk something. Now look at the union bank way of looking at the union bank way of looking at the control matrix. It is only talking about the control, but nowhere it is talking about the risk. Look at this Bank of Baroda. Bank of Baroda is saying this is the risk. And this is the control. Whether this is working or not, you have to mention. And they have only given three alternatives and you cannot write anything else in this Bank of Baroda. And that's the way in which, that's the way in which they want the bank auditors to work. But however, look at this bank. They have described the risk and made the risk statement and said how risk will reflect also they have mentioned here and how to counter that risk they have given the controls here and whether that risk will impact the financial statements or not, they have mentioned here. 
and this is one bank giving it now now we the auditors we the participant majority of them being an auditors we need to understand how rbi is allowing different banks to express the auditor's opinion in a different way probably to their needs well known needs banks are designing it and i think this is not the way in which it has to be done as per the technical guidance note released by the icai on bank ifc if you can read it it is very clear that we cannot allow this to go on at least this okay having understood this i'll just complete this uh, risk control and then we'll walk into the uh, little bit of uh, analytics <clears throat> risk control matrix risk control matrix has three prominent things one is risk number two if this risk if there is a possibility of this risk what is the control if this risk happens whether financial statements will get impacted these are the three important things so what i'll do is i'll take up the process and then keep asking one or two and then we'll compare this process to the statement to this this process to the statement then to this audit report so all this three let us try to understand together so the process for gold loan process 1 now is there a risk is there a risk in accepting an application number one question if there is a risk in accepting the application will that risk has an impact on the financial statement that is what it is asking here financial statements are pnl balance sheet and presentation so if there is an error in the first stage this is what is the first stage first stage is collection of documents first stage is collection of documents in collection of documents is there a risk if that risk occurs how that risk will be and what is the control to mitigate that risk and if that risk if that risk happens whether that will have an impact on the financial statement come back to the audit report now what are we saying i am identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement due to fraud or error exactly what i am doing here what am i doing here i am assessing the risk i am identifying the process i am identifying there are 15 processes and i am identifying and assessing risk at every place i am assessing the risk at every place i am assessing the risk then whether this risk is due to fraud or error and now i am designing an audit procedure to obtain audit evidence for my opinion what is my opinion here my opinion is if it is not applicable then it is true and fair so what i am stating theoretically sorry what i am stating theoretically on this what i am stating theoretically on this i am trying to convert that theory into a practical worksheet here okay now come back at the document stage is there a risk what is the risk incomplete inadequate incorrect documents can happen if so how it will be it will be like unavailability of the required documents kyc gold loan drawing uh, sorry dp demand promissory note negligence of the officials can happen so to counter that risk the control here is the management has to take all this information now when they should take that information as a part of control manually they should take is it manually they should take 
is this control is a manual, automated, partially. As I said, most of the controls are manual except for one or two. Now, whether if at all, if at all, there is any deficiency in document, whether that will affect the true and fair, whether income and expenditure, assets and liabilities and presentation will have an impact of true and fair, management is saying not applicable. But look at this practical case here. This is where in SBI, Vishakapatnam, 669 lakhs gold loans fraud has happened, where signatures of borrowers are differing. Photographs, KYCs are not adhered to. Management saying it will not affect their financial reporting. But this has become a fraud. Because of this, it has become a fraud or a runner. And because of this, 669 lakhs has gone to talks. Not only this, you take any, you take, you take any fraud for that matter, you will find negligence. You take any fraud, you will find negligence. Now, this is what we have seen. I've just now highlighted these. These are all negligence and these are all documentation issues, deficiencies in partnership. And these are all deficiency, 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 and deficiency. And all these deficiencies are resulting in either a fraud or an error resulting in write-off of the loans, which is impacting, but whereas bankers are saying not applicable. And this is how one bank has designed their risk control matrix. And this is how one bank has designed the risk control matrix without even mentioning the risk. And this is how one bank is giving, whereas it is forcing you to say only yes, no, not applicable or not allowing you to write any comments. So now design a process. Now let's come back to design a process. So having understood this, let's take up, now uh, I'll come back to this little later, okay, but still you can also understand. This is the work done at the branch level wherein it is all manual transaction input and authorization, completion of branch operation, end of day operation, verification and scrutiny, stock statements, inspection of security, pledge, lien marking, all this is manual only. And that's where we are saying verify the controls. Controls are preventive, detective, and corrective. And for all these things, you have to extract the CBS reports and carry out the work. Okay. Now let's come back to this. Now, now I said, now I said about bank, a control weakness, and professional skepticism, we said. So having said about the professional skepticism, um, if members permit me to interact with you for a part of second, part of minute, can some members type your, uh, can some members type your response on what is the unusual thing that you observe in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines? of one, two, three, four, five columns. Nine into five is something unusual, control lapse. If some members can interact, I think that's what uh, Vijay Srinivas was saying that the interaction will allow them for an attendance. I think that's the process you have. But uh, may I expect yeah, you can unmute yourself and speak out. Anyone uh, kindly respond to the speaker's query. What is that you observe is what uh, his question. Then from there, we'll try to understand the control weakness. From there, we'll go into the analysis. 
the first one has k radha and the uh, next one has radha k yeah um so what it is so radha k and k radha is there so what it is a same person i believe ah uh, same person as the customer id is different same ah uh, customer id is different, different. i think uh, yeah. the members interacting belong to the ca fraternity and uh, practicing members in the bank audit um so the it is very clear the irac norms or the banking rbi circulars are very clear one customer should have only one customer id one customer cannot have multiple customer ids number 1 number 2 irac norm says if one customer id if one person if one person loans multiple loans if a person has a multiple loan and one account becomes bad all the other accounts of that person should become bad this is the irac norms and that is possible in the cbs or in any system wherein the system can identify one person having multiple loans and if one loan becomes bad of that customer id all the other accounts attached to that customer id should also become bad to that extent the systems are placed but there is a basic flaw where the customer id creation itself there is a control weakness and because of that multiple customer ids are being created so there was also response from one kalyana saying that staff she seems to be staff member of uh, uh, yeah. well. yes 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 excellent kalyana excellent um very good uh, observation and that uh, k radha or radha k and radha suresh kamat or none other than only one and all this nine accounts belongs to only one person called radha k and that radha k is a staff meaning employees themselves not aware of the procedures i don't say that the employee has intentionally created multiple customer ids i am only saying that the rules and provisions are not aware by the staff and uh, what i am demonstrating to you is not a example of 1932 and this is an example what we faced last year and to be very frank this is one of the other and i'll just show you one more uh, uh, example which is of which is also a recent one which is also the uh, recent one wherein now you can see here very recent one last year and uh, this is none other than what i have signed it last year you can see here this is the uh, ifc it says collection of kyc related documents checklist is maintained as per the rbi it is saying and branch official will sign and stamp verified with original this is the control it seems in the 100% in the 100% computerized environment this is the kind of control this is the kind of control that the bank is having it says branch is verifying the original and then stamping it as it's not a system preventive control and look at here we have identified in one branch four duplicate four customer ids multiple customer ids in four situations and one such thing is npa account now to this extent to this extent even today i am saying to this extent even today 
the banking controls are weak and that's what and this is the reason why I, this is the reason why i have mentioned it is 233 lakh crores is the gdp among that 200 lakh crores is the deposits lying in banking sector in the banking as a deposits and all that 200 lakh crores is under ineffective controls and that's where this year we have to talk about the internal financial controls and if the internal controls are weak it may give rise to fraud or error and that's where we the forensic auditors are now having observed this control weakness how did i observe this control weakness i have observed this control weakness by looking at the system screen the way in which the accounts are the way in which the account is created we have studied this process and the study of this process has not taken me more than 10 minutes by sitting with the branch manager like that there are only 12 or 13 major processes like one is advances another is deposits lcs bg uh, cc or uh, cc loans then term loans and uh, three or four different types of major profile in back so all put together uh, the processes cannot be more than 15 or 20 and it doesn't take more than one day for one resource to understand and why i'm saying is wherever i am saying that uh, you have to do this process members quickly jump on to me like a lion or a tiger and say where do you get that much of time but uh, i think that's only an excuse to uh, not doing the system processes but there is enough time for us to do it if unlike we are going uh, like uh, going to the bank like rajnikanth simham singalga it's a it's a group task okay be that as it is now what i'm saying here is we have understood the way in which the name captured is wrong like say if you look at the din number process din number creation process you type the name in the nca din number and they will ask you put your pan number and then the name what you have entered and the pan number name is cross verified and then the system says the name is not as per the pan and then it rejects creating a DIN number. It is a system preventive control. Like that, uh, the uh, you have many controls now uh, in the ITR Java utility also. And there are much more controls in Taxman. And we have seen that uh, there are certain fraudulent way of uploading the income tax returns wherein the java utility could not stop but the uh, taxman could able to sense that data integrity and configuration issues and it says the data entered in multiple places is not matching it cannot be validated but but the same thing is failed in the uh, java utility i will not go into those uh, issues the point why I, I am raising that is the configuration issues are there in it so as i said in banking there are certain banks there are certain banks where you enter the pan number the system will automatically capture the pan number very good but if that is a case if that is a case why is this bank saying here I am originally, I am verifying the branch official, verifying, signing and stamping, signed with original. So, so because of this, because of this error, uh, because of this uh, system, I am saying here, there is a way, there is a problem in capturing the data in this validation. So how do I verify that? How do I validate? How do I validate that process? How I can validate that process of errors in this is what I'm saying here is 
like radha k and uh, like radha k and k radha what what i have stated here how do i process how do i find out this deviation if i sort will i get this if i filter will i get this if i use v lookup will i get this is what we need to carry out now now why i am saying this is because there is an error uh, system error here now how do you find that the errors have crept in because of this system error is what we need to do now now that's what i am taking you now now what i am saying here, uh, here in this is an account is created with k radha an account is created k radha with pan number an account is created with radha k as as uh aadhar card and other uh, documents so how do i find out this if i am sorting i will not get if i filter i don't i may not able to get it but you can get it when you do it a fuzzy lookup let me take you to that process of fuzzy lookup so i am saying here uh, process procedure why i am why i am very very specific of using these words which we have stated in the audit report i am saying perform audit procedures audit procedures perform audit procedures is this audit procedures i am writing what audit procedures i am performing what is that audit procedures i am performing to find out the duplicate names which is resulting in material misstatement is obtain the customer master maybe both loans and advances and if you get a customer master single customer master having loans and advances that's fantastic generally that is not shared because the branch manager himself doesn't know even if i tell you the report name the branch management says no this report cannot be generated so to avoid all those controversies what i say is just take the just take the loan balancing file which has customer and account number take ccod customer account number and name loan balancing file customer account number and name deposit customer name account number customer name and the uh, customer id take all these things and then put it into one sheet like you can also use append one uh, command in excel all that will come and sit into one place then what you have to do i am saying here obtain customer master both loans and deposits paste one below another on the on the content create control l that is create that as a table and then apply fuzzy lookup let me just take you i'll just take this control c i'll put it into a fresh sheet so i'm just pasting here control l to make this as a table then fuzzy lookup okay so uh, before i go into fuzzy lookup just for easy understanding i'm just saying a b c d the name of a person is a b c d like radha k and k radha and in the same database there is a name called like this is k radha and this is radha k same both are them same in the uh, database now if you sort or filter you may not able to get this but if you use fuzzy lookup then all the names of similar things will be put into one one row how this will work is fuzzy lookup fuzzy lookup for the same content and i am saying here two similar things you take and then say go now i'll close this this is the original content and this is what system generated now now i think you can see here for this name 
there is another name called golecha abhinandan where the content is same like a b c d and d c b a and re radha k and k radha it has highlighted and just for a moment you forget this now only look at only these two thing this is an original database and this is where it is throwing the similarities now you can see here abhinandan golecha one name is there for abhinandan golecha there is also another name called golecha so it is taking abhishek kumar srivastava and there is name called abhishek srivastava so in this case it is taking 0.9% 0.9548 points matched one to one match it means both the content is facing is all same so in this way you can find out most similar things which are jumbled okay forensic audit how does this be important this is important in finding out the addresses which are jumbled you know very well one time the colony is written first and the last they write in the last they will write the property number now if you look at the those who are into the income tax practice who are filling the income tax returns they understand now it is asking door number and it will not allow anything property name or apartment name or building name or street name and so on but look at here in this you don't find that kind of address description wherein property number all those property number such kind of things you don't have here it is not asking so what i what's happening because of that because of that because of not standardizing the data input here because of that what's happening is because of that what is happening is first he will write the colony name second he will write intentionally or otherwise so when there is a way of writing unstructured the way of writing it different how do you find out all that similarities which are existing in it is this uh, fuzzy look up but if you use this sort and filter you may not able to look out but otherwise you can able to find out through this fuzzy look up so this is how and this is how we could able to come out with k radha and radha k which has an impact on the material misstatement of the uh, which has an impact on material misstatement okay this is one thing what is the other uh, issue in this what is the other issue in this the other issue in this is you if you can look at the statement here i'm writing the procedure here the other issue in this is one phone uh, you have a database in the bank wherein you have a name you will get the phone number you will get email ids then you will get date of birth aadhar card and a big database of master database they'll share with you not all banks do it and there uh, it's a it's an art of getting things done i don't want to debate on or someone may say i am not getting it if you are not getting it doesn't mean that i can't get it or anyone can't get it but there is a way i can demonstrate my files from the year 2000 onwards that how i am able to get the data that's a different story altogether but what i am saying here is if i am able to get the uh, database good database of course forensic auditors they will definitely get it so what i am doing is i am trying to get this data and then put it as a pivot table i am just redoing it again so if i can generate a pivot table for most common things most common thing is phone number address email id partner a common partner in multiple firms a common director in multiple companies 
a common phone number which is used to operate many phone numbers a common email id used to communicate a common address these are all critical things so when these are all critical those critical wise <coughs> if email is critical if phone number is critical if partner is critical if director is critical you pull that first year and name how many such names now you find here one phone number is attached to 185 accounts i don't say this is something wrong but we need to have a professional skepticism why one account one phone number is linked to 185 it is not prohibited it is allowed and it is not unusual but if you look at the numbers something it looks like unusual like is not unusual you can just see here there are there are 32 here two name one phone number 32 account not an issue here but you can just go on again one family one family having these accounts one phone number similarly you have many such so what our problem is wherever you have such a one number is used for many such accounts it indicates that one person is controlling you can see here one person is controlling all these accounts one person is controlling 157 accounts so what in one among these accounts is a loan account maybe here you can see here again these many accounts are hooked up to one phone number so what so what is the risk is we all know that the common thread that is running across 3 lakh crores of bank fraud bank frauds is only one thing related party diversions i don't say the related party diversions is the relations of the relationship that is described by the companies act and income tax act or gst i don't say that income tax act relation income tax act relation gst relation companies act is only saying 5% or 5% of minimum ownership or 20% ownership or maximum control of directors removing all those nonsense that's not an issue here the issue here is one common thing which is controlling like one 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 phone number one email id one address etc etc which is critical is so whether when you observe these is there any any account is a loan account and from that loan account is the funds have been routed out into all these things is what i need to understand so what do i do many forensic uh, auditors could have done this here i'll take up all those loan accounts i'll take all those loan accounts text or pdf or put it into excel through pivot uh, power pivot or macros or whatever it is there are very simple ways of doing it today again i'll put all those into one place let me demonstrate that here so i am writing the pros procedure remember at the cost of boring you i keep repeating these as many of us are chartered accountants or eurotics so i am designing the procedure for appropriate audit evidence sufficient and appropriate audit evidence for my basis of opinion so procedure i am writing obtain related party bank account what is related 
the related what i mean is a bank number sorry phone number is relation common director is relation common partner is relation common address is relation common email id is relation and so on and so on all such bank accounts are taken together paste one below another So let me just sort, paste one below another and I'm saying tag, this is very important. I, of course, most of the members are aware of it. So whenever you are trying to append or merge too many contents into one place, then you have to put a tag to identify why we join or append too many datas into one place is to find out the sort, the filter and all those things we do it. Then when you do a sort or filter after you merge or append, the content will get jumbled and later on you cannot able to identify whose account statement is this. So to avoid that, what I am saying is you paste before you, this is the account statement. Now what I have done, I'll go to the last place. Now here, this account, say for example, 862, this transactions 862 belongs to one account holder. And this is all that. And before I pasted it, I have tagged all these lines as this all belongs to this account number. Similarly, similarly, all this account holders data, I put it into one below another after tagging with the account number. So now what I do, I simply with one shot, sort on date. I have sorted on the date. Now you can see on 3rd April 776 account number 25 lakhs cash, 25 lakhs check is issued or NEFT is issued or whatever transfer is made. You can see 776 on 3rd. 25 lakhs has come. You can see this even in the timestamp with the teller counter. You will find for every entry there will be a timestamp and a date stamp. Those timestamp is around 12:30 uh, sometime has come, and 12:32 this 15 lakhs cash is withdrawn from this account. This is the advantage of writing the account numbers before you merge. This is what I am saying. I am tagging it. So when you tag account date wise, all these numbers have come in one place. And you can see here, this cash is withdrawn. So what did he do with, do with this cash? And this is 15 lakhs at, at say 1225 PM and 1226, 14.5 lakhs of cash is again deposited back into this account. And like that, and like that, you can find n number of transactions getting rooted and rerouted within this account. And now you may ask me, is there any other way to find out? Yes, you can simply take a cash book of the bank account and which runs into tons of pages, 10 lakh rows, 20 lakh rows, cash book, day, day book of bank. Now that will be huge for analysis. You can also do that. You know, once you do that, but the only problem is it doesn't have, sometimes they give the account to whom it belongs, sometimes they don't give it. Each bank has its own way of doing it. So why do you want to go into such, uh, such uh, processes? If you can find out the relations through this phone number, 
and once you know there is phone numbers and then you can able to do this yeah okay you may say that uh, okay sometimes the phone numbers are common sometimes phone numbers are not common then how do i know you can know that through roc records you can find out through fuzzy lookup so why am i using uh, fuzzy lookup through toffler through toffler why i am using this sun broadcast is pnb account in pnb account the uh, uh, when the forensic auditor has seen that the amounts were transferred into many accounts and we are trying to find out whether the sun broadcast whether these companies what amar jyoti sun broadcast mahua media so many names are there now how they could able to find out only here one company name i'll type here one company name as sun broadcast and then say expand now how is this toffler getting all this information is from the mca site and this is the way they have well organized it this is the beauty of toffler like you know you have the irctc site which doesn't give the data though the irctc is the owner of the railway data but the owner doesn't give the data properly but toffler gives it and so many other sites give an excellent way of presenting the data In the same way the uh, railinfo.com erail.com erail.in these are all the private sites which presents a very good very good way than the irctc in the same way the toffler is presenting it in this way as a network and this gentleman and this gentleman are partners and this gentleman is a partner in so many is a director and here and here and you can find again there are networks now since this is since the site what i am using now the license what i am using now is not a licensed one licensed one hence it is stopping here but if you can say expand it will get expanded like a network you will get mad and you can export that to an excel all the names can be exported into an excel and using fuzzy lookup using fuzzy lookup of of this excel content of this excel content which are in the rows and the bank database of account numbers this is a bank database account numbers which is running into say 35000 rows if if you put those names if you put whatever names you have seen whatever names you have seen in this maybe director name maybe company name and if you you also have their account opening and you also have their roc record and if you can extract their these are all directors not the shareholders and if you can extract the shareholders data and employees data and put it and put it below this put it below this on this name content and use fuzzy lookup and we have done it you will surprise to see in one bank branch the employees the directors the shareholders the companies are 40 40% of 40% of the customers are none other than the employees and the shareholders and the shareholders are employees and the employees are the directors who are binomies of one group are controlled or controlling the branch which which the banker is well aware of it and what are you using here i am using fuzzy lookup here i am using sort i am using filter i am using vlookup 
and I'm using PIO table. Why am I doing all these things? Because the relationship that is described in Companies Act, the relationship described in the Income Tax Act, the relationship that is described in the GST Act is bypassed. But they have a common relationship of employees or controlled shareholders or controlled or none other than the employees. And you can take the PF database and gather all those PF gather of all those companies' names and put it into the same again, run the fuzzy lookup, you will find so many similarities with addresses at all. And with that, one loan amount, one, I think uh, 15,000 crores of loan amount was, was scattered and thrown left, right and center into multiple accounts. And from there it has taken out as a cash. The moment they take out as a cash, the audit trail is burnt. And then it reappears into some other banks and reappears into land records and reappears into gold and reappears into another share, other shares and so on and so on. That's what I said. The VLOOKUP will join to you, will make you to join the land record data, which is very similar, which is very nearby, and the income tax data, GST data, municipal tax data, and so on and so on and so on. And that's how you can use this function. So I, I again, I again repeat what we are using is we are not going beyond. We are not going beyond the sort, filter, if condition, PIO table, and we look up. And this is what you can see uh, the power of fuzzy lookup with altogether. To supplement so you, just, Premnath, Premnath yeah, yeah. to supplement you, Sir. many of us are not going that far also due to lack yes. of time or whatever it is. Right. So your beautiful analytical I mean, analysis is telling us what can be achieved in the shortest time also. What can be achieved in the shortest time also. Yes, yes, sir. Because technology has to be put to use because of the paucity of the time. We are forced to look the other way, complete as a formality and come back. Wonderful, yes. boss. Wonderful. Sorry for interrupting, but uh, my no, comment. No, no, I, I, was, I was very bad in need of that break. <laughs> getting the energies are getting dried up fast. So I might have wanted to stop for a while. Have a sip of water because you are speaking yes. in the morning also. Yeah, yeah, sir. No, yes, wonderful. Yeah. So what I am saying, why we need to do is that's what I am again and again. I am taking you at the cost of boring you again and again. I am referring back to the Institute SA seven hundred, wherein we are making a promise statement here that I am identifying and assessing, and I am performing. I am designing and performing the audit procedure in response to the risk of this what I have assessed here. And I am obtaining the audit efficient, appropriate and, appropriate and uh, sufficient and appropriate for my basis of opinion is always true and fair. My basis of opinion in LFAR is yes, 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 no, not applicable. My basis of opinion in IFC is yes, 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 not no applicable. And today regulators are asking me in the reverse form that your opinion is true and fair. What is the sufficient audit evidence that you have obtained? Is it oral? Most of the time we have an oral audit evidence. Thinking that branch manager maintains the branch record very well at the branch place. Yes, true. We rely the branch procedures. But when some, some risk hits at or after four years, a CBI gives us a notice asking us to present before them. Now I need to carry my audit working papers. Four years back when I have done my audit, I was under the impression that bank records or bank is maintaining very well records. At any given point of time, I can go and get it. Now when I go to the bank four years back, after four years, then the banker will ask, why should I share all these things? Who are you? Why are you asking me all this time? First of all, I don't recognize you. So now we have a very good time with the uh, CBI officers. They'll ask, what is the appropriate audit evidence that you have obtained? Sir, one, one again, some small uh, addition yes, to sir. what 
you have practiced for four years. Yes. You complete the audit, sign the branch audit report, go after four days and ask for additional data. Will you get it? Don't talk yes, about sir. four years, sir. No. Don't the talk moment, about four months also. No. The go moment after, we sign, they forget us. Go after four days. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be too busy for you. Okay. Yes, sir. So True. whatever data you have to collect from the branches and audit evidence or supplementary evidence are in support of your findings, you should collect before the closure and uh, signing of the report, not yes. afterwards, not even right. a day afterwards. Right, right, right. So again, at the uh, cost of boring, I say again and again that uh, we are promising in the audit report that we have identified and assessed the risk and performed the audit procedures. Uh, uh, I, I, I say uh, I have faced this situation before the uh, CBI. They've asked me to demonstrate the audit procedures performed. And uh, you believe me, the CBI Delhi office is filled with chartered accountants, eminent chartered accountants. And when I've stated certain uh, essay, when I've stated certain auditing standards, they said, which line? And I said, they say 620 paragraph numbers 20 and 21, they said 20 and 21 says, you have to get the uh, expert certificate on your no name and you can't rely if a certificate is given to the company. And to that extent, the eminent chartered accountants are engaged today in the CBI. The point what I'm trying to say here is, all these days, there were no auditors to the auditors. We are the auditors and no one used to question us. And today, Nefra is has questioned E and Y, questioned Deloitte, questioned KPMG, and you know the national reports that are available in the market today. Be that as this, the point what I'm saying is, today the regulators are going to an extent of saying such a dangerous word, which I'm always worried even during the deep sleep. It says here, it says here, you are making an assertion that the audit is conducted as per SA. In subsequent review, it is found that the audit procedures detailed in SA were not complied with. What is not complied? I'm just talking about, I'm repeatedly talking about the audit procedures. I have listed down certain procedures of sort, filter, VLOOKUP, paste, tag, all those procedures I'm saying here. If such procedures detailed were not complied, then it says deliberately false statement you made. What is a deliberate false statement? This is the deliberate false statement. Meaning what? I have cheated the shareholder or the stakeholder. To this extent today, the uh, regulators are pulling the chartered accountants. I'm very much worried even writing all this in a lighter way. Any audit report, what is there, sir? We only say control A, select all, control C, copy, control V, paste. And if we still remember control F, we will find and replace other auditor with our auditor. And we have seen even the auditor names sometimes not changed. Company names not changed. Years were not changed. And control S, they don't save sometimes. Control P, they don't print sometimes and the audit reports are going from control A to Z. In a lighter way, I say, come back again to the uh, processes, what we are talking here, audit procedures. Yeah. So this is most of the frauds. This is the crux of, this is the crux of uh, finding the, uh, end use of funds. Now we are trying to find out through Toffler the relationships. And then from Toffler, you are taking the records of shareholder, records of, of records of shareholders and directors. And you are taking the employee shareholders from uh, employees data from the provident fund records, which is publicly available today. And the data, that three data which you independently collect, you put that data into the bank master, which has uh, bank master, which has the data. 
bank master which has a data and you will merge all that things and then use the uh, fuzzy lookup to find out which are the similar places that is one thing and wherever connected like say for example in expenses in one of the case we have seen in expenses they are writing regularly they are writing electricity bills of a house of one property then we have asked which property is this they said this is the uh, uh, marketing office then which marketing office we have taken the number house number of that marketing and then searched in the uh, municipal records and that looks to be the managing director's uh, property and we have searched that location in the google and that they have pinned that google that company uh, the cndf agency or whatever agency shop number they have pinned it on the google map and through that google map coordinates and he has written the house numbers and all through that and with various things that we could able to link that data and put it into one place that's where i said you know if you don't have a proper database we need to create a proper database using we look up and once a proper database is built up then you can use that uh, uh, you, we can use that uh, pio table and so on and so on so this is what is the major 3 lakh crores of fund what we are talking of frauds is all through the diversion of uh, things and then you can uh, easily find out where it has gone and then uh, with respect to the lcs and these uh, lcs and dgs and all you can take out the lc registers you can take out the dg registers and then you can find out and as i have demonstrated it in the uh, uh, as i have demonstrated it on the cbi uh, website there are so many cases which are detailing about the way in which the lc frauds have happened let me just try if i can uh, quickly refer to i think idbi case yeah so this is yeah there are certain sales yeah this is what and this is one thing where uh, which a common thing purchase documents did not uh, match with the vehicle supposed to be carrying and such vehicles or bus the vehicle numbers that are mentioned in the uh, invoices or bus number motorcycle number scooter number three wheelers motor cars excavators tractors such things and they have a common director okay then sales were not backed by lc though the company has done purchases backed by lc but the transactions related party transactions are not with lc but purchases made are with lcs and those lcs are again fraudulent with the fraudulent people and you can see here the diversions are with lcs and all red flagged early warning signals and so on and so on and so on so coming back all that is with uh, a study of various uh, cbi uh, fir cases you can understand uh, those data and then uh, accordingly i said you need to design your database looking at the looking at the various cases that are available i said 1800 and above cases are there filed it if you can study and make it as a database make it as a case study and from that what are all the data that can be available and how you have to integrate and make if a similar case comes to you now how a database needs to be built from various sources and what commands to be used it becomes a very easy to it so what i am trying to say here is only to build these cases will help you to understand and build a template so that it becomes easy having said about a template quickly i'll Uh, refer to one case and then we'll close for the day stock statement analysis so this is in in almost all the cc loans the biggest nuisance is that the stock is never available i have i've just taken out so many cases here uh, you can also take but a simple template you know looking at uh, the examples what i have what we have seen and this is the template what we have made just this is the template alone only this much of data you need to fill 
and rest of it is all calculations. You can see rest of it is all calculations. Rest of it is all calculations. Rest of it is all calculations. So here you will find uh, this is how the banker will convince us this is a sanctioned limit and CC outstanding on a particular date and drawing power. They say the drawing power, the outstanding limit in the CC account is, is well below the sanction limit and the drawing power. But when you look at the quality of, when you look at the quality of stock statements with ratio analysis, now what kind of ratio analysis we need to do? I have a template I'll just share with you. Uh, and this is, this is the uh, template you have. And this is a template where if you can fill the data, it will throw about, uh, which is built by the uh, WARC. So you can input the data and then you can make an analysis and which gives you a fantastic analysis. This, I'll share this, which should be as a template. That's what I'm saying. Now, uh, based on the facts, you should be able to make a template. And one such template is ratio analysis. This ratio analysis, <clears throat> clearly says that the 50% of the closing stock is consumables. Whereas when they have projected, when they have given the CMA data, the stock was 95% of the stock is raw material and finished goods, but consumables are only 10 or 20%. Now we see here consumables is 50%. And this is one thing, <clears throat> uh, this is nothing but what they have stated and what is going on is a clear indication, not only that. We have referred, uh, even Sarat sir in his many presentations was talking about manipulation of financial statements, manipulation of accounting policies and all. If you can clearly read the stock statements, you will find a lot of machineries, heavy machinery spare parts in the stores and spares. And as per the projection CMA data they have given, the stores and spares will not be more than 20%, but in some cases, stores and spares are accounting to 40%. And those stores and spares are accounted as stores and spares in violation of property, plant, and equipment, where certain stores and spares needs to be accounted as property, plant, and equipment. That's a clear violation of accounting standards. Okay, be that. But the point what I'm saying here is, in almost most of the CC, uh, most of the banking frauds we have seen, the biggest nuisance is stock valuation. I'm not going into those because of the paucity of time. Otherwise, that's a good uh, case study. This is one indication. Now coming back again. Detars opening balance of Detars with current month sales and closing Detars <clears throat> gives you the collection. If there is a over collection, if there is a huge collection, not relevant to this at some points, then why that huge money is coming and going in? That is one thing. That is what we have seen in many cases. The turnover is very less, but huge cash comes and goes out. Collections comes and goes out. Loan amount comes and goes out. Meaning loan amount is not commensurate with the sale. That's a that's an early warning signal. I'll come back to it a little later. More than that, the collections technically is 10,000, but the collections in the CC account is 7,000. Now, when you ask the uh, borrower or a banker, or then they say, uh, sir, uh, this collection is true. But if it is true, then whether that collection, why that collection is not accounted in the same branch or in the same consortium, uh, then they will slowly say, no, we are permitted him to open a current account. From there, the diversions take place. That's a part then sometimes they may not answer properly. Then we can say that whether the sales is inflated and detars is inflated to get more drawing power, cheating again is one indication through this study. Remember, nothing is fed into this. This is all formula driven. Okay, now comes here gross margin. Now you have opening stock, finished goods and all, then you can calculate the cost of goods sold and you have sales, then you can calculate the margin. And again, the CMA projections, manufacturing CMA projections, we all know the chart chartered accountants are well aware. 
broadcasting unless it is 35% and above gross margin gross profit is 35% and above they can't have a margin to pay the uh, interest and installments and any projections will have 30 and above gross margin but here the gross margin is just 7% indicating indicating going concern issue and what is projected what is happening and look at here look at here the rosy picture what he shows look at the actual picture on the ground now debtors debtors in days debtors in stock debtors in days is always 300 days stock in days is always 600 days which is above the 90 days and 278 days and what are all these all these are none other than early warning signals and what are all those early warning signals significant movement in inventory growth in turnover is not significant receivable significantly increasing but not sales disproportionate increase in current assets working capital increasing turnover not increasing and so on and then you find substantial related party transactions you find inconsistencies in annual report that's what i said the property plant and equipment and so many other things if you want to look at the inconsistencies in annual return you better read that frrb institute frrb three modules three volumes they have they have published accounting standard wise they have uh, they have they have published so many violations that are being done I'll, I'll just quickly run through those so that you will understand the impact here this is what the favorite slide of sharat sir uh, in many of its presentations he discussed this elaborately revenue recognition accounting standard how fraudulently they'll misstate it and so on with so many accounting standards property plant intangible impairment segment related party inventory accounting of taxes current and non-current life of assets recoverability of debtors fair value and so on and so on and so on on these you have tons and tons of pieces of ici material being published which is available at free of cost and that's what i'm saying here annual report inconsistencies so this 45 early warning signals where sharat sir was one of the prominent person to contribute to the rbi these uh, uh, red flags so you can see here now how to investigate all those why should you investigate all these things why i say is as a part of lfar reporting as a part of lfar reporting we need to talk about whether the system of early warning framework is working effectively if i say yes here what is the audit procedure did i carry out to say yes what is the sufficient appropriate audit evidence did i obtain to say yes here if i say not applicable what is the sufficient appropriate evidence and audit procedure i have carried out to say yes here is what today regulators are asking so within the given time i think um, i am unable to proceed uh, we'll meet next time for a detailed uh, presentation uh, any questions i'll be happy to take up and discuss thank you very much for the patient listening